Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 6 under the topic root locus. To start with, you will get a clear idea if you go through the video of the procedure to solve a problem using root locus. I will give the link in the description. Now the problem is, sketch the root locus for the unity feedback system whose open loop transfer function is. So this is the given transfer function. So from the transfer function we can tell how many poles and zeros. Right. So in denominator we have three terms right. So we will be having three poles and when you look at the numerator term it is a quadratic equation. Therefore here we will be having two zeros. Right. So now we start with step one to locate the poles and zeros. That is we have to find the values of poles and zeros. So first we start with pole. We are having three terms. We have to equate these three terms to zero. So here it is done. And the value of poles are found to be 0, minus 1 and minus 2. Right. And the next thing is zeros. So it is a quadratic equation. So we are using the basic max formula. Minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. And from this quadratic equation we have to write the values of a, b and c. Right. So here the value of a is 1, b is 6 and c is 25. Right. So just substitute the values over here and finally the values are found to be minus 3 plus or minus 4g, right. And step 2 is to locate the, to find the root locus on the real axis. So just we have drawn x axis and y axis and what are all the values of poles? The values of poles are 0, minus 1 and minus 2. So here just mark the values here let it be 0 let this be minus 1 and let this be minus 2 right what about the value of poles sorry what about the value of zeros the value of zeros is found to be minus 3 plus or minus 4j so minus 3 plus 4j is 1 0 so here this is let this point be minus 3 so minus 3 plus 4j lies here and minus 3 minus 4j lies here, right. This is our step 2. And step 3 is to find the angle of asymptotes and centroid. And angle of asymptotes formula is plus or minus 180 degree into 2q plus 1 divided by n minus m. Here the value of n is 3 and m is 2. So n minus m is 1 here. So the thing is first substitute the value of q equal to 0. The angle is found to be 180 degree. And again when you substitute the value of q is 1, you see the answer is 540 degrees. Again when you convert this 540 degree, you see it becomes 540 minus 360, it again gives plus or minus 180 degree. Right. So, you see here the angles are repeated exactly one after another. And the next thing is finding centroid. So, centroid is given by sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by n minus m. So here once you substitute the values of poles and zeros, here the value of centroid is found to be 3 here. So in our previously solved problems or whenever you consider a root locus, we are always going to consider only the negative real axis, right. But here you see the value of centroid lies on the positive side, right. So this problem is a bit different, that's it. Then the step 4 is to find the breakaway and break in points. So the first step is we have to calculate the closed loop transfer function. So the closed loop transfer function is given as g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s and g of s is given in the problem. So here you see this is our g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s. Right. So here once you take LCM and solve, finally we will be having an expression like this. So from this transfer function, what is the characteristic equation? The denominator part of the closed loop transfer function is known as characteristic equation. So here this is our characteristic equation, right? So here just we had multiplied these three terms and I am having an expression like this. Finally, we have to frame, frame an expression in terms of k. So, k is given by this expression, right. Again, we have to differentiate this k and equate this term to 0. 
So when you look at the expression of k, you see here we are having s terms both in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So it is u by v, right? So now we are going to differentiate. So what is the formula of u by v differentiation? It is given by v square v du minus u dv. Okay, this is the formula. And here this is our u and this is our v, right? So just substitute the values accordingly, right? And we know the basic differentiation formula, right? The differentiation formula is a to the power n is given by n into a to the power n minus 1, right? So this is the formula here. So just substitute the values. You see, first one is v square and this is our v. So here it is v square and next thing is v du. So this is our v. So just write down the v as such. The next thing is du. We have to differentiate u. So here when you differentiate u, what happens? This minus sign is common for all the numerator terms, right? So this becomes minus 3s square and here 3 will remain as such and s square becomes 2s. So 3 into 2s will become minus 6s and here this plus 2, that is minus 2s, when you differentiate this one, it will become minus 2, right? Then minus u into dv. Here there is a minus and again u has a minus sign, you see, right? u is also having a minus sign here. So what happens? Uh, minus into minus becomes plus, right? And we are having u term here and dv, we are going to differentiate this v. When you differentiate, s square becomes 2s and 6s becomes 6. So 2s plus 6, right? And the next thing is, again we have to do multiplication, right? We have to multiply and we have to arrange the terms. We have to combine the terms together that they, that they are having the same power. So here by solving finally we are having an expression like this. Since minus term is present in all the terms we are taking the minus sign commonly outside. So this is our remaining term right. And here we have to equate this expression to 0. So when you equate this term to 0 here our numerator term should be equal to 0 then only this term will become 0. Do you agree or not? When the denominator term becomes 0, what happens? The final answer is infinity. But what we need? We need only 0. When this term can be equal to 0, that is when the numerator is equal to 0, this expression is said to be 0, right? So, here we are equating the numerator term to 0. Again, you see here the maximum power is 4. So, this expression will have 4 roots, right? So, the procedure to solve this type of expression is, it is bit lengthier, I will make a separate video for that. But just now, I will simplify how to find the values. So, just initially, I am taking the value of s as minus 1, whereas the root is here not equal to 0. Again, I am just randomly picking values, right? But you have to go by the procedure. That procedure is known as Lin's method. I will make a separate video because it is uh, quite lengthier. Right. So, when the value of s is equal to minus 0.45, the value of k is going to be real and positive. Right. So, this point that is minus 0.45 is said to be a breakaway point. The next one is step 5 to find the angle of arrival. So, here why we are naming it as angle of arrival? Since here we are having complex zeros. Right. Here we are using the term angle of arrival. So here we are having, this is a rough sketch. So here we are having three poles and two zeros. So we are measuring the angle of arrival. So we have to, we are considering this complex zero A, right? We have to measure the angles from the remaining zeros and poles. So here this is our angle theta 1 and this is theta 2 and this is our theta 3. And finally, this is our theta 4. So, we have to calculate the values here. So, theta 1 is given by, it is 180 minus tan inverse of the imaginary coefficient here is, it is 4, right? It is 4 divided by here, this term is 3, right? The distance is 3 here. So, tan inverse of 4 by 3. So, here we are getting the value like this. And next one is theta 2. Again, here when you consider theta 2, you see, here we are having the complex 0, that is, it lies here, right? In some other cases, that is, in the previously solved problems, 
not zeros or poles whatever may be here we will be having some other poles located just like this right so since all the poles are lying here okay right right like this that is beyond this line no poles are located here all the poles are located before like this so here the formula gets varied okay just make a note of it so here we are writing it as theta 2 is written as again 180 minus tan inverse of here the imaginary part is 4 and here the real part is we are considering only this minus 1 right so what is the distance between this minus 1 and minus 3 it is simply 2 so just substitute the value tan inverse of 4 by 2 and here the angle is like this right and the next one is theta 3 so theta 3 is nothing but again we have to do the same you see it lies over here so 180 minus tan inverse of imaginary coefficient is 4 and the real term is here what is the gap it is only 1 so tan inverse of 4 by 1 here the angle is 104 degrees and what is the value of theta 4 we can find it out directly right so it is a straight line so the value of theta 4 is 90 degrees right so finally angle of arrival at complex 0a is fine to be 180 minus theta 4 because theta 4 is the angle which is made by the another complex 0 right. So 180 minus theta 4 and we have to add the remaining angles contributed by poles. So just substitute the values and finally the answer is 77.5 degrees. Here the original answer is 437.5 so we are subtracting 360 degree. So, the final answer is 77.5 degrees, right. And the next thing is angle of arrival at complex pole A star. So, how to find this? Just you have to reverse the sign of this answer. So, here the angle is minus 77.5 degrees, right. And step 6 is to find the crossing point on imaginary axis. Again, here we have to consider our characteristic equation. We have to simplify and we have to substitute the value of s as j omega right so here once you substitute the values and after simplification we are having an expression like this the next step is we have to equate the imaginary part to zero so here the imaginary term is made equal to zero so here the value of omega square is going to be 2 plus 6k right then the next step is we are equating the real part to zero so here in this expression the real part is minus 3 plus k omega square plus 25k is equal to 0 right. The value of omega square is 2 plus 6k right. So just substitute the values over here and finally again here we will be having minus sign right. This minus sign is made to come inside. So finally by solving the expression we are having the final answer as minus 6k square plus 5k minus 6 equal to 0 right again this is a quadratic equation right because the maximum power is 2 so just solve the equation as usual the same procedure minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a just substitute the values and here the answer is fine to be 0.4 plus or minus j 0.9 that is this is the value of k right so here we are having two root values right that is the, they are the value of s right so here we have to substitute this s value in the expression of k and we have to check whether it is positive or real only if it is positive and real then there will be a crossing point on imaginary axis right so here for both the values the k is not positive and not real therefore the root locus will not cross the imaginary axis right now we will draw the root locus on a graph sheet so here this is our graph sheet the first step is you have to mark the scale right after marking the scale you have to write mention the scale here that is 1 centimeter equal to 0.5 units here so the first step is we have to mark the poles and zeros right as usual x axis stands for real axis and y axis stands for imaginary axis right so the value of poles are 0 minus 1 and minus 2 so it is 0 minus 1 minus 2 right and the value of zeros are minus 3 plus 4j you see here it is minus 3 plus 4j here and downwards minus 3 minus 4j is marked here and the next thing is centroid is 3 and the angle is plus or minus 180 degree right here the root locus we are considering only on the negative 
real axis but here centroid lies on the positive side so no need to consider right you can just skip the step the next thing is breakaway point so the breakaway point is minus 0.45 so here this is my breakaway point i had marked here right and the next thing is angle of arrival since we are having complex poles we should always use the term angle of arrival so angle of arrival is 77.5 degrees so you have to keep the, keep the protractor like this and this is the angle which is marked here right and again another one is minus 77.5 so here you have to keep the protractor reverse okay you have to keep it in reverse wait i'll show so this is the way how you should keep since the angle is in negative you have to reverse the protractor and you have to mark the value as 77 here right so after marking the points just you have to make a line line just a small line like this okay for both the complex zeros right and we don't have any crossing point on the imaginary axis so no need to bother about that right so here we are having a breakaway point so from this problem this problem has how many poles you see we are having three poles right so here this root locus will have three branches so first we have to find out where are, what are all those branches so we all we all know a root locus branch will start at a pole and it will end at a zero right so you see here there is a pole so a root locus branch starts here right here it gets break away so it gets broken here and it travels and it reaches this zero that is the branch one starts at this pole and ends at this pole right and again second branch starts at this pole it gets broken here and it ends at this zero right and the third branch starts at this pole and it will meet the zero at infinity so it will go like this right so what you have done is correct finally now i will draw the root locus and i will show you so this is our final root locus right so this is your branch one and this is your branch two and finally this is your branch three right so here comes the end of the problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you